onto non-European swords. Budget range. Remarkably budget friendly, this one here. This is what I got recently. This right here reduced to $35, down from 75 US dollars or 95 Canadian. With munitions grade, there's generally something wrong with them, like somewhat bent or warped blades, um, some kind of flaw. On this one, I didn't really notice anything serious. It's really not a big deal. And this one is perfectly functional. Uh, I still need to finish testing it for the full review. I did some tests edge on edge for another video demonstration and this is held up very well. This one here is a pretty hefty blade. It's wide, fairly thick spine. So this is extremely sturdy and cuts well. Pretty short grip, but uh, other than that, yeah, I like this one. And how much cheaper can you go? Particularly if you go for the munitions grade one, even the standard one is not expensive. Another budget pick is the Condor Dynasty Dadao. I reviewed this one quite a few years ago. There is of course some limitation in this price range. Like it's not gonna be as fancy. And this one here is somewhat on the heavy side. It's one of those tank swords, very thick blade. You can chop into all kinds of stuff and this won't take any damage because it has a, a pretty strong, thick convex grind on it. So it's not a fantastic cutter. But, you know, chopping harder materials like wood is, is still works pretty well with it. I actually did a comparative test with this and the Reaver Cleaver from Zombie Tools. And, of course, the Reaver Cleaver did better. It costs substantially more. So higher quality overall. But for the price, this one here is great. Uh, as an alternative, if this isn't available, there's also the Hanwei Warlord Dadao. This one looks a lot nicer, is probably not quite as durable as the Condor. I've seen positive reviews. I haven't tried this one myself. Uh, so I've, I've seen in a review the usual thing. Edge isn't very sharp, out of the box, typical Hanwei thing. But uh, it's probably still worth the price because it's really not that much. This one I bought as a gift for a friend quite a while ago, the Thunder God Katana, uh, pattern welded steel. Uh, this is very affordable, 132 US dollars, 168 Canadian. And for that price, it's quite good. I mean, you can't expect the world here, obviously, but it's a decent cutter. It's not as sharp as you would expect from a Katana but uh, still like with a bit of a touch up cuts pretty well and yeah quite reasonable for this price range it has a nice looking wrap I, I quite like the purple on this and yeah it's, it's pretty well made and handles nicely for the upper budget range i would recommend the Gnunting from traditional filipino weapons this one i very much liked reviewed this a couple of years ago and it performed nicely. Uh, cuts quite well. It's durable. You can chop into wood no problem. And so it's it's a bit of a multi-purpose blade. Has utility use as well. It's a nice compact blade. Handles beautifully. Traditional Filipino weapons has plenty of nice designs overall. I've had the Espada Idaga as well. Tested and reviewed that one. Uh, I used to have the Igorot Hat Hunting Axe. I used to have the Chris Sword 3, which was great. I've had positive experiences with TFW, with the exception of the Panabas, which broke when I tested it. And uh, then they changed the design and improved it. So yeah, as a rule of thumb, can easily recommend those. All right, mid-range LK Chen comes to mind. I already mentioned the Han Dynasty Swords for the ancient category. And this one is a 20th century design, actually. This is the Silver Swallow, Miao Dao. This one I absolutely am going to test and review at some point. I just can't do it yet because I don't have a good location at the moment. But based on what I know of LK Chen's quality, I would expect this to be quite good. And uh, I very much like how it looks, so... 
This should be good. If you like big swords, I gave this Nodachi from Swords of North Shore a positive review. On this one, I appreciate the battle wrap, meaning the Manuki is on the right side, so it's it's on your palm as opposed to your fingers wrapping around it, which always feels awkward to me. This handles a lot better. This battle wrap is quite nice. This one is a long, impressive blade. Cuts beautifully. I enjoyed that during the testing. Easy to recommend. Okay, on to fantasy and tactical swords. We have the Cobra Steel line. This is made by Windless Steelcrafts. And I reviewed this one here, the Kinjal, but they're all made the same way. So they have sort of rubberized uh, synthetic handles, which are actually quite good in the hand, very comfortable. They come sharp. Uh, unlike most other windless swords and they've got a number of interesting designs based on my experience with the kinjal definitely no problem recommending these and very cheap apoc is a company that i'm not familiar with however these are angus trim designs and these are the tactical angus trim designs that i'm somewhat familiar with i tested and reviewed the zombie slayer quite a while ago, which is a similar design. I've seen reviews of other Angus Trim tactical swords, and this seems very similar to the ones I've seen before. And this is remarkably affordable. There is the Survival Katana, for example. There is the Wasteland Gladius. It's a nice um, leaf blade. And we've also got the Tactical Cutlass. I'm pretty sure I've seen exactly this before. This Angus Trim Tactical Cutlass, this seems very familiar. So I think it's the same design. So yeah, worth a try, I would think. The Zombie Go Boom Executioner 2.0. I've tested and reviewed this one. I think these are made by Condor. And um, for the price, this is great. I definitely like that one. It cuts well and you can do abusive testing with it, no problem. Nice, durable steel, 1075, and for 125 US dollars, 160 Canadian. Can't really go wrong with that. Also came with a good edge. I had no complaints about this one, at least as far as I remember. In the mid-range, of course, zombie tools comes to mind. Just about any of their designs. Every Everything I've tested and reviewed so far has been good. And uh, the spit is back due to popular demand. I wonder what might have caused that. Uh, it was discontinued by the time I was able to finish the review and put it up and then they brought it back because you know, people like this design and for good reason. This thing is pretty damn cool. If you don't know about zombie tools, they have a reputation for being pretty much indestructible, which I've shown a number of times. You have to go really crazy to damage them in, in any significant way. The dive falls was great. I've done a lot of crazy chopping and it just kept coming back for more. So yeah, these are just robust, very solid, durable, um, impressive, cool designs. Here's a high-end maker that I don't have first-hand experience with, but I've heard enough about them to know that they are known for high quality. Uh, this is the ankle biter. And uh, they have a few other fantasy designs as well. They also got the toe cutter, which costs a bit more. Pretty neat design. And with Longship Armory, you can also go very high end. For example, there is the Mandate in stock at Calafathena right now. That's a pretty penny, 3000 USD. But it's a beautiful looking sword. I mean, just look at the detail on this. That is quite nice. What if you want something ultra high-end, like pure luxury? You know, if you roll cigars with dollar bills. Okay, maybe not quite that bad, but if you have a lot of money and you're not afraid to use it for swords or on swords, whatever, this is all your dirty fantasy dreams come true, basically. They, they will do anything. Like, even if you have like some crazy design, you wanna go really creative, 
They've made an extremely nice master sword. I don't know if y'all can find it. Right, they made several master swords, which are beautiful, like absolutely crazy nice. They've also made He-Man's sword, or a version of it, inspired by it. So, yeah, the catch is their prices they say are between 4,000 and 8,000 US dollars typically, so five to 10,000 Canadian, depending on exactly what you want. So this is way above, you know, mere mortals, but you know, if you're filthy rich, then by all means. And finally, I'm just gonna sneak in a recommendation for non-sword items, but still blades. If you're looking for daggers and maces as well, Todd Cutler, is very interesting choice. So a lot of nice dagger designs here. These are unsharpened by default, so you have to remember to add sharpening service if you want, if you want a bollock dagger. Not my style, but hey, there's also other types. Good old Rondell here. These are expertly made. He has a YouTube channel as well, if you're not aware. You probably are. Definitely some nice stuff to be found here. And that's it. So I hope you found this helpful. Everything is linked down below. I'm also gonna link my sword playlist. Um, if you wanna look at other reviews that I've done before that you haven't seen yet. And uh, yeah, I hope this is going to be useful for reference and uh, maybe you can do something with it. So thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. Happy uh, shopping spree, I guess. Which sword should I buy? If people are looking for something to get like a... No, don't ramble. Do not start rambling. Questions that come up almost every live stream. And that was fine. That was fine. I don't know why I stopped. It was not the perfect delivery. Needs a little more spice. Questions that come up almost every... You know, sometimes you just... It seems like your tongue suddenly gets stuck. Well, then listen to the... Listen to the recording afterwards. It doesn't even necessarily seem bad, but at the time it's like... What with my tongue? Oh, I'm such a goofball. It can be difficult to navigate all that. And of course, there's a there's a wide variety of ramblings. That's enough. Cut it out. Today I want to answer one of those questions that I did it again. Stupid tongue. It'll make me bite you. I know how to use my tongue. Today I want to answer one of those question, 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 question. Today's episode in magnificent outtakes. Aliens. Today I want to. <laughs> Today I just want to have a giggle fit. Like an imbecile. Today I want to. <laughs> Fucking hell! Oh no, we've reached critical mass. <laughs> when you start the same sentence so many times that it becomes hilarious for no reason, other than the fact that you've had to restart so many times. The shape of the grip. I can't reach that far. Ah, oh, my hand is off. No! Clicky, clicky, mother. My brain is a hellscape. I can tell you that. It's a confusing, disturbing place to be. But that's okay. I got it under control mostly. I would fucking die if this wasn't recording. No, no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Oh, if I had to redo all of this, I would fucking piss myself. 
Okay, that was that went uh, a little more vulgar than intended, but um, I swear a lot off camera. I I don't think most of you realize that, but I I have a potty mouth on me. <laughs> swear like a king sailor. Tell you what, I have so many tabs open. What is wrong with me? Uh, I gotta keep them open as reminders because otherwise I forget to do things. Does this really help? I don't know. I tell myself that it does sometimes, but other times I'm not so sure. Oh, I'm already recording for one and a half hours. I gotta condense this. It's too much tangential stuff and too much restarting sentences and I'm making it worse right now, so I'm a dumbass. Mm -hmm.